Right, so a bit of a rainy Monday morning. Just in the shed. Um, just what I've just been doing, I've just changed a few knife sections on the, this is the knife, what goes in the combine header. It goes in there. And I've just changed a few of the knife sections that were damaged. The rest of them are fine. I, they were all, that was a brand new knife. Uh, the beginning of summer 2019. So now what I'm gonna do is put the knife back in the header. Just guard off. And we'll, it's a little bit of a fiddly job putting the knife in, but we'll see what we can do. Eric's gonna help, aren't you? Eric's a great help. Basically, it's just a case of sliding it in. Just like this. Oh, it's a bit stiff. And then this bit here bolts on to the bottom of this linear box uh, like that. He says. So I'll spin that around. Go just like that, and then I've got two bolts that go in there. But I think there's a couple of bits I've got to do at the other end. I think we've got to put a couple of knife sections on one, two knife sections there. Yeah, I should have probably put those knife sections in before I put the knife in, but it's okay, I can slide them in from the end. You're right there, Eric. Trying to see what's going on. Yeah, so I'm just going to slide two knife sections in at the end there and bolt them in and then connect up this linkage here to the end of the knife. Right, how are we doing then? So, hope everybody is well. Um, it is currently Wednesday afternoon, 29th today. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll just start this video by saying thank you to everybody that's subscribed to the channel. Uh, we must be very close to or just about hitting 30,000 subscribers. So yeah, thank you very much for everybody uh, watching, well, subscribing and watching. Um, so yeah, right, moving on. I'm up at farm two. I am topping grass margins around the outside of the fields. So basically around the, the outside of all the arable fields, we've got these uh, grass margins. Uh, some are four meter, five and six meters, and basically they're there for uh, but ground nesting birds. And then when the the net ground nesting birds are finished in July, we're then allowed to cut the grass uh, that's on them. So yeah, and it basically just tidies up the farm all nice. So yeah, that's what I'm doing today. Uh, in a minute, we're going to stop and have a break, let the dog out, and we'll have a look at some of this wheat because it's we're very close to harvest now and we'll have a look at the, some other crops as well. Come on. Right, so, we're gonna have a look at this wheat, quickly. I can pull you off the windscreen. Right, so, uh, this wheat is, the variety is Graham. We've got Graham and Zayat and uh, around 85 hectares in total. And, well, we should have had more uh, wheat, but obviously wet autumn, wet winter, didn't get all the wheat planted. So, um, as you can see, it's quite green here. Not much of the fields actually look like this. The majority of the fields are almost ready to cut, um, apart from moisture. 
moisture would probably be quite high because uh, it rained at the weekend and it rained Monday. So we've got quite a lot of these green patches in the field and also green in the tram lines. Well, there was lots of green in these tram lines. But what we've done is we actually sprayed the crop on last Friday with Roundup. So that, the reason why we do that is so that it evens, the crop evens out. So the green bits then become riper much quicker. And then uh, it make, just makes a life a lot easier. Otherwise you end up having to leave little parts of the field when you combine in. And if you do cut it and you want to bale it, the straw's not, not fit to bale. So yeah, we spray it around up and then you have to wait a minimum of 10 days before you can harvest the crop so that there's no you know, glyphosate left in the grain or in the crop. So this crop has been sprayed for uh, five days now and we'll be waiting a, a minimum of another five days, which will be Monday. Um, so that, yeah, like I said before, so that the glyphosate, there's no traces of that left in the crop. Also, you want to wait at least 10 days for the roundup to work properly to kill the to kill the green patches and do and do the job that we intended it for so we walk out into the field you can see quite a bit a lot of it's looking quite ripe now you know when it's getting really ripe because the the ears are almost pointing at the floor so just have a quick look at this not that it's very easy to do with one hand Away. I should think it's probably still quite high in moisture right now anyway but at least there's some nice plump little grains there so it should be I think we're expecting sort of like eight ton nine tons to the hectare something like that right so we just have a quick look at the spring beans the variety of these is lynx and we planted these in the second half of March uh, so we just have a little walk out in there they're still, these are still a few weeks away from harvesting yet. At least a few weeks away. If we suddenly get some hot weather, they'll soon, they will change quick. Um, I'll just quickly show you, there's quite a lot of pods on them, which is good. You know, on some of the pods, there's like 12, there can be like 12 pods to a plant. And pick one. So I'm not sure if these are actually going to be going for like livestock feed or human consumption. At the moment they look quite good. But I've not grown uh, beans before but I've been told that they get a bug called um, brucid beetle. And the beetle eats a little hole through the middle and then they have to go for livestock feed. Um, but if we get away without the the brucid beetle attack in then they might be able to go for human consumption and then be able to get a decent price for them something else that i'll show you out in this field is um can you see there's a dark spot here basically and there's another one there as well basically that was aphids that has done that to the crop they basically attacked the crop eaten eaten the crop and and has killed the crop in that little patch there. And there's loads of these little patches. Um, another one right there, look, all the way along, mainly around the headlands. But so what we did was we actually had to spray the crop about a month ago with an insecticide to kill the aphids. Um, we did wait for it to finish flowering, um, but yeah, that's what we had to do. Otherwise the whole field would have looked like that. They would have just killed the whole crop of beans. just get a slightly better view of the beans from up in here look I'm actually really pleased with them well we all are actually um, yeah really pleased We're looking forward to harvesting harvesting the beans and see what sort of yield we get as you can see there there's quite a big patch brown patch there where the aphids killed the beans but uh, yeah should be a good hopefully be a good harvest on the beans right good morning everybody it is, yeah, Thursday morning. I've got the header on the back. I'm on my way to farm two. When I 
when I came home yesterday afternoon, I left the topper at farm two, and uh, yeah, and now I'm going back again this morning with the header because the header needs to go up there, so I might as well take it with me. And then uh, this evening we're gonna run the, we're gonna take the combine up there, up to farm two. So we'll do that this evening when the traffic's died down. And then it, it'll all be rare, well, apart from the tractors and trailers, everything will be there ready to go. Uh, but like I said yesterday, we can't start till Monday. We just gotta let those green patches, let the roundup work on those green patches a bit more, and then we'll be good to go. <laughs> we just met a grain lorry. Mate, you in the car won't go forward far enough. He's on his bloody phone doing something. Go forward a bit. <laughs> Hello, can you get them all to go forward a bit? Yeah. Hey, get off your phone and move forward. He's on his phone. Right, I think I'm... What, the bloke in the car? Yeah. The bloke in the lorry? No, in the car. We're having a mare. I've met every Tom, Dick and Harry this morning. It's like rush hour. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Sometimes you can drive up here at this lane and not see a car and then sometimes you come up here and see everybody. Thank you. Yeah, there we are. It's a bit warm out here for you. So, just finished the top in at farm two. Well, that's all the topping done now, everywhere. So, I just want to show you these spring oats really quickly. The, I can't remember the variety, but I just thought I'd show you, there's still quite a bit of green in the in the straw. Um, they're actually quite thin, to be honest. Oh, it's a bit better over here. Although looking across the top, you can see a bit of green. We'll cut these after the wheat. So we've got that 85 hectares of wheat to cut. And then we'll be coming down here to cut these spring oats. There's 70 hectares of spring oats down here. Um, and then we've also got spring oats back at farm one. See, they're still a little bit milky, you see. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually going to go and blow out the radiator. Um, because I think my radiator is getting blocked up, or at least the grids on the front of the radiator are getting blocked up. The first thing you notice is that the air cons um, isn't working very well, and that normally means that the rad's blocked up. So we're going to go and do that before we go home. Well, we're going to do that at the yard at farm two before we drive up the road to farm one, so she's so that she's cool on the way home. Right, we're away. It's, uh, oh, there goes my aerial. I'm gonna have to put my aerial back up again now. Um, Thursday evening. And yeah, we're just gonna take the combine up to, well, we're at farm one. We're gonna take it up to farm two. Um, not the country lane way that you saw this morning with the tractor. We're gonna go around the long way, but the roads are a lot bigger, so. Right, let's go. We're out on the main road. Dad's in front um, in the Land Rover. He's going to escort me. He's got flashing lights on the LED lights on the front in the windscreen and uh, a wide load sign on the front bumper.
Right, last little bit of battery left in the camera, so we've arrived at uh, farm two. So we're going to put the, put the combine in the shed. Dad's pointing at something, and uh, yeah, ready for ready for combining next week.